Right, right. I think another important thing to mention here is when when autonomy when individual autonomy is infringed upon, uh, it's 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 crushing to the spirit. It really is crushing to innovation. It's crushing to, um, I guess, us as basic human beings to, to you know use a collective this term there. Um, I will mention it again in the watching of uh, Wayfaring Men, and this isn't a spoiler at all. It's something that's uh, that's uh, I, I think most of us, most most people listening to this podcast, and you and I call are, are well aware of. But when people are uh, you know held down, uh, well, like if you look at the, the most communist and, and socialist countries, um, innovation is definitely quelled. Um, you know, if you look at some somewhere like North Korea, uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot of innovation there. They aren't allowed to innovate at all. And uh, therefore, you know, as it's been going around the news cycle, uh, that's why that place is kind of a shithole. It's because uh, there is no individual autonomy. There is no ability for people to use their creativity to uh, turn raw goods into producers' goods. There, there's nothing. There's, there's nothing like that, uh, except for kind of the black and gray markets. But, uh, you know, that we're talking about, uh, you know, small numbers that are, uh, most people, you know, don't. Uh, most people are, you know, very patriotic and, uh, you know, they, they want to, to obey the law and such. You know, those speakeasies back, I think it was in the 20s during uh, alcohol prohibition, you know, uh, you know, a lot of those places, you know, in, in some ways, I guess it, they were in some sense, they were Taz's, too, because whenever the, the bludgies would raid those speakeasies, people had to, like, kind of scatter out. And that was really the only form of protection. So, like, early detection systems were actually rather important in, in, in one ways, although they didn't have really a lot of technology relative to us in this time period. They had the kind of the idea down, and even in the second round book on strategy, they kind of mentioned something like, we need better early detection systems so we can evacuate everybody. So the Taz and the second realm is, is in a lot of ways more similar than not. However, you're right in saying that Taz is, as a concept is geared more towards festivities, almost a carnival atmosphere in some sense, where you're, you're going there to have fun, but also trade, uh, maybe even get laid, uh, or, or maybe some other things. Um, again, if it's a free market, you know, individuals have different desires, different interests, different demands, and there's yep. different supplies of things. So, you know, some people might want to get high. Some people may, uh, may, may even even maybe something that emulates uh, a little bit more uh, more mainstream in some ways, like playing video games or something. I don't know, or or board games. I mean, people have different people have different interests. It's extremely important to keep the two realms separate. Uh, you know, second realmers don't interfere with the first realm, keep the peace, and, uh, you know, hopefully vice versa. Uh, but uh, obviously the violence comes from, from, from the first realm, uh, if, if, if from anywhere. Um, so I think that's a, a pretty major first discussion point. Yes, and um, sorry, something you said reminded me of something that should be mentioned. There is an element of segregation here, which is important to mention. However, it also needs to be properly understood. This is not the equivalent of the statist, you know, Jim Crow laws, where the state is basically forcing segregation, nor is it the allegedly opposite pendulum, but really in the same vein, of coerced integration, which was the authority, the e equally, equally, right? Equality is fine as long as we're all equally enslaved. Uh, the equally, uh, you know, coercive integration of the so-called anti-Jim Crow laws or whatever, or by now there's busing and, and all of that kind of stuff. No. The main thing here is all about voluntary association, right? The people who want to associate with each other will associate with each other, and the people who don't want to associate with each other won't associate with each other because, again, the baseline is individual autonomy. And some people are going to be multicultural, and other people are, and other individuals are going to be more uh, homogenous based on whatever uh, set of uh, characteristics, whether superficial or otherwise, is important to them. And this is something that the first realm really does not understand because they their baseline is coercion, period. Um, or at most, the second realm would be pretty much strictly a cultural thing and not much else. As opposed to if the economies of scale were noticeably larger to varying degrees, then the second realm becomes much more of a tangible thing. 
a tangible reality where you really do need access control points, and then depending on how things go, you really do need the anonymized remote control defense systems, the defense weaponry, and and so forth. Not to mention uh, other types of services. The uh, you know those um, I think it was also mentioned in the book on strategy. What was it? The, the what was it? The double blind trading booths or whatever. Again, if you mm-hmm. have two people. They already know each other. I mean, they're just good friends. That we're that, that's that everything's on a personal level at that point. Um, let me put it this way: I think the second realm is more geared towards folks who aren't necessarily going to be you know best friends with each other or or close friends or family. I think the second realm is a way for like strangers to interact who have who have shared cultural values, but there's like no real family history in a sense. If you want to think of it that way, no personal histories, and things are more anonymized in some sense. Um, uh, again, whether it be digital or real world, um, I think that's probably one major distinction, as opposed to something like a Vanu Association, where I would assume pretty much everybody knows everybody else. Uh, they may not tell each other where each other's Vanu shelters are, right? Because I think there was an admonition about that, like, don't do that, right? Um, for other reasons, because uh, we want to maintain invulnerability to coercion and all that. But uh, again, you can't rat out somebody if you don't know where, where certain things are, right? <laughs> I do think there's one thing worth mentioning, um, the notion of import-export and, and the role of the proxy merchants. The agorists really don't emphasize this, really. It's not a contradiction for them to do that kind of thing, but it's not a point of emphasis for them, right? They want to abolish state degree in black market trading. The second realmers are more similar to the Venuans, at least when it comes to import, export, and proxy merchants, because they too realize that some sort of interfacing with the mainstream culture, at least for the time being, as they're building the second realm, is 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 just, you know, uh, the nature of the beast, so to speak. And I really like that because. That really kind of dovetails into what Rayo was saying back in the 60s and 70s, that there needs to be some sort of interfacing. And as the economies of scale, shall we say, upgrades or otherwise develops, then perhaps less Venuans and even Second Realmers would have to necessarily do import-export. And given the reality of division of labor, only some of them would specialize in being the proxy merchants, in facilitating actual import-export, and the rest of the Venuans and company would just be existing more or less wholesale in an ethical enclave, in a second realm, etc. And obviously, I, I would I would kind of suggest that that would kind of extend out to the Agorist notion of the counter-economy, too, that they could be in, even the Agorist would benefit from uh, this in some sense, where they could actually be in the counter-economy more so than not because of the Venuans and the Second Realmers and so forth. So I really see these three different libertarian strategies and the adherence of these strategies as being more cooperative rather than not because they're emphasizing different things that I honestly think is more similar to a divi- uh, is more similar to labor specialization. Because they're emphasizing different things, they can mutually reinforce each other. <laughs> 